Gronkowski going down is huge. So uh, they've slid, they've fallen, but they can bounce back as they get used to playing without the big guy. A couple of wins this year over Connecticut and Tennessee, as well as a couple of home losses to Arizona and UCLA on their resume. And the violation on the tip. Zags will get it. The officiating crew tonight, Randall McCall, Larry Spaulding, Justin Shamian. And underway on the hilltop. Josh Perkins, the 6'3 redshirt freshman, running the point now. Of course, the Zags lost uh, their backcourt from a year ago, and Gary Bell Jr. and Kevin Pangos. And Richard will step outside for the triple. And the air ball to start things off. Yeah, I think San Francisco, the reason why they're going to allow Dirksen to match up with Wilcher is because they're expecting Wilcher to shoot a lot of jump shots, which he does very well. But if he's going to, if they're going to take advantage of what they do really well, is, is getting him inside and taking advantage of his size, then move him out because he loves to shoot the ball. But they've got to take advantage of that 6'10 versus 6'3 matchup. Zags will start out in the zone and over the top of it for Ronnie Boyce, the third. Uh, your expectation on how the Dons can hang and uh, have a shot at the Zags tonight, Brad? They're going to have to continually mix it up on defense. The, the Dons can score the basketball. That is no problem. They're going to get shots up. They're going to score. But they've got to stop Gonzaga. They'll have to do it by playing some man. We talked to Coach Walters. They'll do a little bit of zone, a little bit of full court press. They're going to try to keep them off balance so that they don't get used to the same looks. And I think that'll give them the best opportunity. Dirksen with the skip pass. They're looking for another three from Boyce. No good. The rebound and the run for Gonzaga. Despite their smaller lineup, it has not affected USF a whole lot on the glass, but already here early on, the offensive stick back for Wilcher. Perkins made a nice drive to the basket. The defense didn't come from the weak side to help. Missed the easy layup. Uh, Wilcher's there to clean it up. See Gonzaga as well, going to use a little bit of zone, try to push the basketball out, make the Dons go ahead and shoot that ball, which they can do very well. Devin Watson, he's the second leading scorer, excuse me, third leading scorer in the league. And inside, Sabonis and one, the foul on Dante Reynolds. Good job by Sabonis running the floor. He got Reynolds on his hip and uh, just posted him up, threw it inside. Powerful finish with that left hand. See the nice hold off. He's got Reynolds on his hip. Got to get around. You got to get some help. You got to keep moving till you get around. Good job by Sabonis. Well, even without Karnowski, they still got Sabonis at 6'11", Wilcher at 6'10". And when we talked to Mark Few today about how they've started to get things going without Shimmick, he called it the emergence of Domas. And the play of Sabonis, he's averaging a double-double this season. Well, DeMar Sabonis is a really strong defensive rebounder. Has abilities on the offensive end. It's just a matter of getting shots. Good deal around the rim for the Zags. Perkins will push. Really surprised that the Zags came out that first possession, a second possession with a little bit of a zone defense. They're so big, I think you would want to entice the Dons to drive and utilize, you know, the size, make them shoot over top of you because they want to shoot jump shots, speaking of the Dons. They can score the basketball. Some pretty good length on that 2-3 zone. And you got Wilcher on one of the wings. He snares the rebound. Great job by Gonzaga thus far on those defensive rebounds. They're the bigger team. They should get every one, long or short. So that's good box out. Sabonis so thought about the three, spinning in the lane. McClellan will spot it up. No good in the box out there for Dante Reynolds. He's the only one out there above 6'4". He'll stand 6'8". Dante did a good job defensively making Sabonis go to his right. He's predominantly left-handed, making go right. And young man out of Kinston, North Carolina, Dante Reynolds, d and up. Traveling violation gives it back to the Zags. One of the concerns for Rex, uh, Rex Walters down at that defensive end was how, how do we handle the ball screens? And you got five guys that can shoot it for the Zags. Yeah. And they're big guys. I mean, everyone can shoot the ball, and they're already at a size deficit. That's a great little pass over the top. If he can just finish it, very nice play. Taking advantage of the size and strength of Sabonis. Good recognition. Way to realize your teammates and their abilities. Very good. Sabonis with five early on. Good patience, too, here. Not to go right up with it, but take the dribble and get to the other side. Yeah, shows a lot of ability. Defense collapses back, but he does a good job getting to the post position, establishing that good block position down in low where 
They, he wants the basketball. He's so big, so strong. Great avenue to throw it in there. Good play. Montre Clemens, the 6'7 senior from Baltimore, will check in. Off the bounce, Boyce, the floater in and out. Again, another defensive rebound. One shot, and that's it. That is the downfall of, of being a jump shooting basketball team is you don't get a, enough people on the glass to create offensive rebounds. And with a big team like Gonzaga, they should eat them alive on the defensive board. Perkins lost the handle. The Dons thought that it was out of bounds off the Zags, but they'll keep it. And with substitution, they'll bring Dranginis in. Got to get over there and step in front and, and cut that drive off. Uh, Fabu didn't do a good job of getting his feet moved, so he got lucky there, didn't call a foul. Perkins high off the window for two. Giving up easy layups, the Dons are. You've got to play defense, you got to talk, you got to work together when you're a smaller team. Got to get weak side help. Everyone should be able to switch because there's a similar size. There's no reason to give up layups. Eight of their nine points in the paint. The other one, of course, from uh, the 15 point strike. And the three for Devin Watson. He's got six. He has been outstanding for Coach Walters this year. He's the leader of this basketball team and does a great job of getting guys. He's the coach on the floor. Excellent player. They don't need a lot from him tonight. Sabonis rattles at home. Everything coming in the lane now for Gonzaga early on. No answer for Sabonis. Uh, the Dons got to have to figure out a way. They got to drop back and double team. Get in his lap. Make him get rid of that basketball. Make them take an out shot. Dirksen was able to save it from going into the backcourt. And now Watson on the drive. The sophomore from Oceanside, California, lost the handle. Zags with the push. McClellan scoops it up and in. Don's giving up a lot of layups early, Beth. This is not a good sign. And the defense is very porous. Got to do a better job getting back. You've got to communicate, talk, and help your, help your teammate if you're going to have any success when you're a small group. You got speed, you got the shooting, but you got to D up if you're going to play against a team like Gonzaga. All their buckets coming in the lane. Dirksen with the kick out. They try to attack inside again. Sabonis, solid with the D. One and done. Big fella running the floor now. Wiltshire. Trying to force his way in on Dirksen, and the foul will be called on Dirksen. It's a nice post up by Sabonis. You know he's going left, but they can't do anything about it. All day long, big fella gets down in and takes care of business. Nice little up and under by McClellan. Zags up 13 9. Be ready to winter with Infinity. Now through January 4th, lease the Infinity QX60 for $3.99 a month. The National Championship, January 11th at 8.30 on ESPN. Welcome back to San Francisco. Zags up 13-9 on USF. All their uh, buckets coming in the lane. Sabonis, the kick out here to McClellan. And the foul's going to be called there on the drive. Zags have dominated thus far early on. First six minutes of the game. It's a 12-0 paint run there I mean they, they're, they're 12 you know they score 12 points in the paint and they're just dominating throwing the ball inside Sabonis has seven to lead the way Devin Watson with six for USF Wiltshire wrestling inside with Dirksen and if that's on Tim that's number two that's really a poor call I mean Wiltshire's got so much size Dirksen's just trying to be active and move around and create and I, that's that's just a tough call. I don't, I don't think you call that a foul. He's already at a disadvantage. Uh, Wiltshire has the advantage the whole way. How is that a foul? In and out. The rebound for USF. So two fouls here in the first six minutes for Tim Dirksen. And one of the best players for the Dons heads to the sideline. Chase Foster is now checked into the lineup. Watson, will he have to pick up a, more of the scoring load? Rebounded by Sabonis. They continue to go one and done on the offensive end. Third rebound now for Domas. It was a foul off the ball. Yeah, it was a foul off the ball. It was accurate. And uh, Rex Walters is really having a, a tough time with these officials. He's getting after them pretty good on some of those foul calls. Uh, 
which I have to agree with. And the foul on Dirksen there was really tough, and they're already shorthanded. So you got to go down. You got to execute if you're the Dons. You have to be patient, get quality shots every time, and hope that adds up to quantity. You just can't come down and fling it up because you're not doing very well on the backboard. So uh, you have to concentrate. Watson trying to get to the rim and does so. Devin Watson off to a good start. Good job by Watson. Now he found out that, that defense will yield if he if he gets deep enough inside. So now you got to continue to try to pound and drive if you're the Dons. Another takeaway here for USF. Watson to the rim Very and nice. another finish. That's twice he's gotten to the front of the goal or the backboard to look for a layup. Found a little chink in that armor. Zach's come back down and try to get it inside the, the big Ryan Edwards down there. He's got 10 points now to lead all scorers. And here he comes again, two on two. Off the hesitation, squatted by Dran Guinness, trailing the play. Nice job by Dran Guinness coming back, helping out. But see him keep driving. No, he didn't settle for the three-point shot, which they did their first five or six shots. He kept going to the basket. He's trying to create some contact here, but still, getting to that goal, that's huge. All West Coast Conference freshman team a year ago. Rex Walters was telling us how it's a, a similar system that he runs to the one that Roy Williams did at Kansas, and that puts an awful lot, Brad, on the shoulders of the point guard, and Watson has really stepped up in that role this year. He's got their last seven points. Yeah, it's all about tempo, trying to push the tempo, create an uncomfortable pace for your teammates to, or the, the team you're playing against to play at. It's almost chaotic at times, but you're under control in that chaotic pace, and it really hurts a big basketball team, so let's see if it works. Silas Melson, uh, zero in blue, now checking into the ball game. Another whistle off the ball. That's going to be on Clemens. That will be his first. That's the fifth team foul now on USF. On the inbound, Perkins, uh, Perkins rather drifts towards the hoop. That one won't go. And a foul called on the rebound. I think it's going to be on Edwards. Yeah, Edwards had that basketball. He's got to he's got to aggressively get out and snatch that basketball. He's a big guy, 7'1", 270, 80 pounds, and he's got to really assert himself against these smaller guys. Take up some space, go get that ball. Sophomore out of Kalispell, Montana. He's going to see more minutes with Karnowski, who's been out for their last nine games, and then uh, on Thursday back surgery that will put him out for the rest of the season. Uh, decision will be made at a later date as to whether or not he would return next year on the drive a chance for a three-point play for a uh, Fabu. excellent job by Fabu. he turned that corner Sabonis Sabonis was supposed to show and he did on that screen but the typical thing that happens to a big guy when you have a pick and roll high is he doesn't want to continue out with that guard and have the mismatch of being caught on the perimeter. But what happened there is Sabonis showed, and the guard guarding him didn't get through, so they both set a pick. Sabonis set a pick on his own man. And he, so Fabu turned the corner, did the right thing. No one there, goes straight to the front of the goal. That's the second foul on Edwards. A couple of quick ones for him. Well, Fabu, the junior from San Antonio. Knocks down the free throw. It's a 7-0 run for USF to jump out in front. Wiltshire on the sideline right now. Catching his breath for the Zags. Tim Dirksen is on the bench for USF with two fouls. Good defense right now by the Dons, making the Zags move the basketball. Brian Guinness drops the mid-range. He's been such a glue guy, a terrific six-man his career. Yeah, Coach Fee was talking about him, what he's done, how he stepped up, and he comes in and gives him a spark instantly. Great hustle defensively and offensively. High off the window for Uche of Fabu. He's got five. The Dodds taking advantage. They figured out they can get to that goal, not settling for those jumpers, attacking Gonzaga. Got them back on their heels. Keep attacking. Sabonis from the baseline for two. He's got nine. Nice shot by Sabonis. You can live with him, though, taking those shots as opposed to posting you up where you have no chance. Perkins almost came up with a terrific defensive play. Tapped out of bounds. 10.53 to go in the first half. A one-point lead for USF. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Infinity. Luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. 
jumpers from the floor, from, from, from the perimeter, which is what they do very well. But as the game got going, he started really attacking the middle of that, that, that defense. And that really surprised you because Gonzaga is such a big team. But he's done a good job leading his basketball team. Watson and Wiltshire, a couple of the top scorers in the league, along with Jared Brownridge. Jared had 23 in Santa Clara's win over Portland tonight. And another foul. This one's going to be on Nelson, his first. And it's the 15th foul now on Gonzaga. Wiltshire, by the way, out of the timeout, has checked back into the lineup. So they've got Wiltshire and Sabonis together. Their minutes have gone up quite a bit uh, since Karnowski went out with the injury. I was talking to Coach Few today. He said both of those guys have slight ankle sprains. So I'm sure he'll be monitoring that as well. They're both moving pretty well, but just want to make sure that that doesn't exacerbate itself as well. They don't need any more injuries. This is Sabonis. A tap to Wiltshire. Tough shot. Just wow. inside the line, and he got it. Wow. I mean, that was really good defense. If he's going to make those, there's not much you're going to be able to do. That was a really difficult shot. He's got four points now to put Gonzaga back in front. Sabonis so. snares another defensive board. That's his fourth. Sabonis using that side straight up. Very vertical. Didn't foul. Didn't extend his arms. Just used that size, took the basketball. And that's the arm bar whistle right there on number 22, Foster. See, Wiltshire comes off of a screen from Sabonis. It's big on big. Well, the Dons don't really have anyone big, but it's kind of yeah. their big. <laughs> and uh, you'd expect him to throw it down to Sabonis. It's going to post up, but, man, that's a tough shot. He makes a lot of those. USF has been going with a smaller lineup, a better scoring unit, a little scrappier on defense, according to their coach, Rex Walters. Well, Fabu will come back into the lineup. He didn't play after transferring from uh, SMU. And then last year was a reserve, now stepping into a starting role. And nice. Wow. Boy, what a nice jump hook. That is a very fundamentally sound basketball player right there. Caught the ball, put it on the floor, got the guy on his hip. Could have passed the ball. It was a, was a threat, triple threat position when he caught it. Man, what a good basketball player. Terrific last year for the Zags after uh, transferring from Kentucky. He was the outstanding player of the West Coast Conference Tournament last year. Some folks had him pegged as the preseason national player of the year coming into the season. High off the window again, a Fabu. Fabu gets a tough shot. Devin Watson got stopped. They really did a good job on the perimeter the Zags did, slowing down Watson. Fabu makes a tough running bank shot. He now has seven. Several whistles here uh, in the first half, Brad, trying to defend the big guys inside as we go back to Wiltshire on that last position. Nice, nice jump hook. He took his time, dribbled into the lane. Somebody's got to come back and make him get rid of that basketball. Same thing with Sabonis on that offensive end. When those big guys catch the ball, don't let them put it on the floor if you're the Dons. Drop somebody back in their lap, and the Dons have a small lineup in, so as you go down to help, you can. these guys can scramble back out because they're all small guys. They're, they're quick. you got to stop that dribble. I'll get a little more size in there with 6'9", Matt McCarthy, and the uh, front end of the one-on-one one is good. Well, it's Super Tuesday on ESPN, presented by Hotels.com. Ah, freshman Ben Simmons, we just saw him with LSU. will be taking on Tyler Eulis and the Kentucky Wildcats. That game will also be streaming live on Watch ESPN. A couple of free throws there for the Zags. They're up three. USF has been hanging tough. Wilson looking wow. to tie it, and he does. Wow, what a, that's another tough shot. Uh, the pick and roll up high didn't work. The screen was very poor. Watson deep in the corner. Nice pass. That's a tough shot. You don't want to make it a, a healthy, a steady appetite of those. So to get you in trouble, but great basketball this far. And then off the turnover, he's got uh, another three here, 13 points for Devin. Boyce looking for his teammate. Roddy Boyce finding his teammate in the corner. Watson knocking it down. Gonzaga's done a better job of stopping that penetrating dribble though. Even Ronnie Boyce, when he turned the corner, he was met by a help side defender, so had to get rid of the ball. That zone. 
Trying to break it down with the dribble. Another floater there won't go. McCarthy weak side to the left hand nice. uses the glass. Matt McCarthy gets in there. Big guy, 6'9". Getting on the rebound, getting on the offensive glass. San Fran needs a lot of that if they're going to be successful tonight. Freshman from Australia. He's at his average couple of points here in the first half. As we hit the eight-minute mark to go. McClellan looking for three, no good. Nice defense. Good job. Dante Reynolds did a good job of getting Sabonis out on the floor. McCarthy nice. around Sabonis for two more. I'll tell you what, you got to let this young man play some more basketball. Nice, nice moves on the block down there. Right around, little hook around Sabonis. Good job. Another 7-0 run here for the Dons. Their second of this first half. Wiltshire responds with the right hand off glass. Such good touch Wiltshire has with the basketball. I mean, it's just so soft and fun to watch. McCarthy swatted by Sabonis. McClellan on the run. Sabonis grabbed the rebound, but then he stepped on the line. Great hustle by both teams. Lou. See the drive here. Nice pass down McCarthy. Look at this nice little hook shot. Oh, yeah. Off the glass. Pretty, baby. <laughs> basketball team and on the offensive end he passes the ball very well he's a good facilitator he can score and on the defensive end he's such a big physical I mean he's almost 300 pounds big guy blocks out good defensive rebounder uh, really an anchor on both ends of the floor they've got to adjust they've got the they've got the bodies they've got the talent to do so but when you're counting on him going into the season it is a huge adjustment Watson somehow managed to get that one to go. I wonder if Coach Walters drew that one up. I don't think so, but <laughs> nice shot by Watson. He's keeping his team ahead in this basketball game. He's doing everything he needs to do to, uh, to give him offensive firepower. Sabonis to the left hand. That won't drop. With his eggs just to get back to Karnowski, but first another look at Watson here. Another shot in the lane. I, I really like the fact that the Dons have, have decided to attack, and Rich Walters has done a great job of changing the pace of this game. First five or six shots were threes and a lot of that. That's what you expect from a small team. They're going at the heart of this basketball team, attacking and trying to get them in foul trouble and get some good shot opportunities. He's got 15 in the first half, does Watson. But the Zags, they have been playing without Karnowski for the previous eight games, but this is the first game they're playing knowing that he won't be back for the remainder of the season. Watson got lost in some traffic on the screen, misses the shot, and McClellan's got it. Good job by the Dons getting back. Let's see if the Zags can execute their offense. Patience will give them an opportunity to get the ball inside, take advantage of that size. Sabonis waits till there's only one gold jersey around him, and it won't go down for him. Still getting good looks. That was a good shot by Sabonis. The defense still has to be a little quicker getting back to him. Make him get rid of that basketball. Both teams shooting 50% in the first half. We've seen the Zags play some zone. They're now playing some man. Nelson, good job to go up and get it. Don't like the jumper because it's a one-and-done situation on the defensive good board. Good-looking shot, though, but just got to make sure you don't get a, well, on a steady diet of that. The Dons did a good job of getting shots in the paint, attacking, being aggressive. Don't bail, don't bail out Gonzaga right now. Sabonis gets even closer this time to finish. Got to get some hands up a few of the Dons. Get some deflections. Rex Walters talks about Coach Williams and learning from Roy Williams. One of the things that Roy Williams loves is defenders to get their hands in the passing lane. Get deflections. That's what the Dons need to do. The speed. They got the speed advantage. Got to take advantage of that. 14 for Sabonis in the half. Of course, that one won't go. Tip back out. USF will have another crack at it. Oh, Fabu. Good job, but Dante Reynolds keeping that basketball alive. Knocking it out. Giving a Fabu an opportunity. Good job. Doing this without Tim Dirksen, who left at the 14-minute mark with his second personal foul. All West Coast Conference performer. Wilcher. That's really good defense. The Fabu stayed just back far enough that Wilcher was afraid to turn the corner because the Fabu was almost right in his lap. That's what I'm talking about. And the Fabu's quick enough to get back out, force Wilcher to take a bad shot, an off-balance shot. Boys trying to utilize that quickness. Sabonis snags another rebound. That's his sixth of the half. McClellan on the drive. And the foul. 
Let the big 6'11 Sabonis run in the, the break here. You see what Sabonis down low. Nice post up. Big man goes left every time. Nothing you can do about it. You can't stop it. And a Fabu. Nice little bounce. Little pass shot off the glass. Brought to you by Verizon. Better matters. Well, after tonight's Motel 6 Cactus Bowl, stick around for Sports Center at night with the coach and Max Bredos. They'll have highlights from the Nuggets Warriors, all the bowl games, as well as college hoops. It's Sports Center at night after West Virginia, Arizona State on ESPN. Probably first and foremost will be highlights from that crazy Alamo Bowl with TCU coming all the way back Man. to beat Oregon in triple overtime. Oregon had him. I tell you, TCU just would not give up. Unbelievable comeback. They could tie the, the, the record for the second second most points or the most points in a comeback. It's yep. unbelievable in the bowl game. It was another good day as well for the SEC. They go 8-2 and two in their bowl games. And, of course, Alabama still has one more to play next Monday night against Clemson for the national championship. Be on January the 11th for you. Chase Fisher. Nice. Wrapping it around and scoring over Wiltshire. Well, they're really showing there's a weakness in the back line of that Gonzaga defense. They, every time they get to the basket, they get a pretty good, good, good shot. Team. So... Good game plan thus far by Coach Walters. He's really got them attacking, got Gonzaga back on their heels. Edwards is back into the lineup here for the Zags. Sabonis out right now. He's got 13 points. Watson is leading all scorers with 15. He, too, is taking a breather. Nelson, tough shot. Really, really good defense right there by Chase Foster. A little overambitious on that pass. Fifth turnover for the Dons. Edwards working in the lane, won't fall for him, and then out of bounds to Gonzaga. Good post up by Edwards. Catch the basketball, make a nice little quick shot. He could just get to where he catches the ball on balance and shoot that basketball quickly. It's much bigger than everyone else on the floor. You know, putting the ball on the floor, you make yourself smaller. Catch that basketball, be ready to turn and shoot. They can't do anything with it. They jump hook over the top, just like Wiltshire. Final three minutes of this first half. Sabonis will come back in with the Zags down 33 to 28. They're going to head home after this. Five of their next seven games will be at home. Because they had uh, that crazy early season schedule that had them off to Okinawa, Japan, and then down to the Bahamas in the battle for Atlantis. Over 17,000 miles they traveled for their non conference slate. Almost tipped into their own hoop there, and then blew it out by Josh Perkins. Bonds had a good defensive effort, almost got a good basket there. Now let's see if the Zags can come back and run their offense. A lot of time, let's get some, let's get that ball back inside. That's what they were doing so well early. Kind of went away from it. McClellan on the drive, offensive foul. Too many dribbles. Play inside out, throw it to Sabonis so and let him can dictate the pace. Make them come double team him, kick that basketball out to those open shooters. Good job, Dante Reynolds stepping up, taking that charge. His first personal foul. USF coming off a 107 point outing in their win against Portland. They can score it. They can score the basketball. Uh, if they can consistently defend, there are going to be a handful for a lot of people. Watson wow. gets it to go. Tough shot. Good defense. Really tough shot. He's got 17 points in the first half, and it's the largest lead of the night for USF. Very surprising. Sabonis leaves it off for Dragon Guinness. Nice job. Get that ball to Sabonis. Let him be the facilitator. He's dominant inside. They have to make a decision when he catches that basketball. They have to come back and get it out of his hands somehow. So someone's going to be open. Play inside out. Quite the turnaround, too, here, Brad, for USF. You talked about the early threes, and now it has been all off the bounce. They are actually outscoring the Zags in the paint. Perfect. That's what you wanted to attack. 
Wiltshire on the run. He and Perkins have been quiet offensively, and now Kyle will heat it up a little bit. Nice transition basket. That's a tough shot in transition, but he makes them all the time. It's part of their offense. That's what they do. Timeout will be called by USF. 103 to play. And a three-point lead for the Dons over the Zags. Hello! Not getting enough oomph out of your energy. Keys to the comeback win for Oklahoma that could bounce the Sooners into a number one versus number two matchup on Monday night in Lawrence against the Jayhawks. And then Ben Simmons drops 36 for LSU on Vandy. And that's all coming up on the Land Rover Halftime Report. As we hit the one minute mark to go here in the first. Watson's been the story so far. Wow. He'll get three more. Wow. 20 first half points for the sophomore. Nice little screen to run him deep. Little fade pass to the corner. Good job. That's a, I'm telling you, the degree of difficulty on Watson's shots has been really impressive. He's made some tough ones. That's what you need to do right there. Nice job. Sabonis. Got no answer for that. He's got 15 along with 10 points for Wiltshire in the first half. USF, if they so choose, could hold for one here. USF, you go in at this halftime extremely happy with the way things have turned out. First few minutes of this basketball game, I thought they were in trouble. All the out shots and Gonzaga's going right down and pounded it inside. Well, they figured some stuff out and uh, they've they got to be really happy. Off of Nelson with uh, 5.8 seconds to go, but only three on the shot clock here. And if you're Gonzaga, you haven't played your best basketball. You've played well, but you're on the road, and uh, the home crowd creates a little adrenaline for the home team. And you're only down four, so a lot to improve upon. Look at that. They double-team Watson, make somebody else take a shot. And it's Sabonis securing the rebound. But USF will head into the locker room in the lineup. He only played the first five minutes before getting into foul trouble. And he is their second leading scorer. Have to be impressed with how well San Francisco played. They they really played well that first half. They did everything that coach asked them to do. Now let's see if they can put it back, do it back to back. If they can do it another 20 minutes, they might win a basketball game. And a big hurdle here too for the Zags. You you just found out a couple of days ago that your leader, Chimit Karnowski, who you were hoping may be able to return from an injury, you find out he will not be back for the rest of the season. And as a senior, his career may be done. If he opts to go to the NFL, and USF hits the three coming right out of the locker room to extend the lead. Ronnie Boyce comes off the screen, top of the key. He didn't hesitate. Looked like he'd been waiting to shoot that shot all night long. They're off and running again early here. Three-point shot. Now they'll come back and keep attacking. They keep knocking Gonzaga back on their heels. Hits his first bucket after missing his first six shots. Wiltshire, offensive rebound, and the putback is good. Good job on Wiltshire. He got... Dante Reynolds on his back. It almost looked like he got a foul there as well. So good job boxing out, getting that rebound. 12 now for Kyle. Everything pretty much coming from those two guys so far tonight for Gonzaga. Another three of Fabu. Uche just posted up, gave it to Watson, stood there and watched him drive. He was waiting on the penetration kick, and he did get it. Watson tried to turn the corner, but the defense was good. Good kick out, good shot. Off to a good start. That's the bonus, the kick out to McClellan. That's off the mark. Here comes Watson. Seven threes in the game. Can they get an eighth? Wow. Yes, they can. Wow. <laughs> Better get a timeout. Man. Such confidence in that shot. And, uh, I mean, right off the bat, bam, 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 three threes. Fabu knocks down a nice three, stretches them out. Good spot. It'll be North Carolina, Florida State opening things up at 7 o'clock. And then at 9 Eastern, uh, they are expected to be numbers one and two in the country. Oklahoma and Kansas from Allen Fieldhouse. Both those games will be streaming live on the ESPN app. A three-point fest for USF. 8 of 14, and there is the first triple of the night for Gonzaga. They had been 0 for 6. San Francisco just decided they're not going to run out and defend that three-point shot. 
So Eric McClellan stepped in. He's going to have a chance to make a lot of those. They're going to have to start knocking those down because the Dons are giving it to him. Nice jump hook right there by Dante Reynolds. Well, right now it's on the defensive end for the Zags as uh, USF is shooting better than 52%. Nice help by Dante Reynolds getting down that baseline, helping stop that drive. And Perkins help out is coming off of a career high 26 points in his last game their win against Santa Clara He's got just two so far tonight Good ball movement here for Gonzaga won't go down for Dran Guinness Good job by San Francisco good defense a lot of talking a lot of communication a lot of switching Dante Reynolds again step out on that screen high showed didn't allow the guard to turn the corner good job Dirksen well rested Gets to the rim, and it's the biggest lead of the night for USF. That was awful easy. Whenever someone, if someone gets a layup in the middle of a, a half-court defense set, there's some tremendous breakdowns defensively. Sabonis right up by the rim for two more. We talked about the dominance of Gonzaga in the West Coast Conference over the years. Not easy to beat these guys. In fact, in Mark Few's 17 seasons as the head coach, they have lost a grand total of 25 conference games. That's it. Right now, the Gonzaga team just seems to be a little bit off balance. You see Dirksen, he drives all the way to the goal. That's a 6-3 guy getting a layup in the middle of your half-court defense set. That's not supposed to happen. Maybe he gets a jumper, but you don't give up layups. When everyone's standing inside the three-point line, how does it get there? The kick out, Boyce, his fourth three of the night. Gonzaga, you better realize that, that those shots are going to go down. Uh, like I said, they scored 107 points against Portland the other night. They can score the basketball. We said that from the get-go. Don't give them anything. They're getting too many easy shots. And I think they, they established that by softening up that middle by driving with Watson in the first half. Those 20 points. Looking for their 10th triple of the evening. That one won't fall. And now the counter for the Zags. Perkins leaves it off for Sabonis nice. inside to Wiltshire and a good break there. Very nice basketball. Keep the ball up high. Two seven-footers, one facilitating, one shoot. That's really good basketball. Need a lot more of that. Dominate inside with that size. And now they need some stops on this end of the floor. Well, they got to help weak side. Those layups got to stop. Dirksen, no, but no box out. 6-3 guy goes in there and gets the rebound amongst the trees. Reach in foul going to be called on Dran Guinness. And the triples are raining down on the Zags right now. Ronnie Boyce, the third, says, I got this one, and I got a couple more left in my, in my game. You ready for our annual two-on-two -two game? Q, this is my year. I just locked in my teammate, and he's good. Yeah, well, big deal. I got athlete friends. Let's do this. What up, Fitz? No way, Kev. Carson gets so jealous. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right, because... He's probably listening right now. Rock! I'm in. If I can open... No. Well, if you're a fan of the Dons, you don't like it, you love it. They're up 54-43 to 43 on the strength of nine three-pointers. They're shooting 75% from the field here in the first four and a half minutes of the second half. They've just absolutely been dominant shooting the basketball on the offensive end, and their defense has been really, really stellar. A lot of communication, a lot of talking, a lot of help. They're really just taking it to Gonzaga, and uh, it's really surprising. It's got, I, I did not see this happening. I thought they would really struggle with the size and the, and the strength of Gonzaga, but they have just dismantled them uh, the first half in this first five minutes of the second half. Nice back door and one coming up. Wow. Ronnie Boyce in the feed from Matt McCarthy. Brooks makes a nice pass down McCarthy. Nice pack, pack, pass to Boyce who goes back door. Cut, uses the goal to help deflect off the defending of Sabonis. Nice play. Ronnie Boyce has given them a third scorer in the last couple of weeks. He's averaging 15 a game over their last three outings, and this free throw would get him to 15 again. Matches, then now this becomes their biggest lead of the night. Up 14 on Gonzaga, who have won the last three West Coast Conference regular season and tournament titles. 
14 of the last 15 regular season crowds. They have been a force. And a team that played in the Elite Eight a year ago. Nice post up by Wilcher. They're trying to get the ball inside. Going to take a quality possession to really get a, a good shot. And he got fouled there. Got to have a lot of that. They ne probably need a little bit of an answer at the three-point line, too. Let's see if they get one here from Wilcher. Front rims it. So you're Perkins seeing got it. Very well balanced offense from the Dons. They're getting in both ways. So three beats two every time. But you got to get something. Perkins earns a trip to the free throw line here for a couple. That'll be the second on Devin Watson. Mark Few talked about uh, Perkins and their, their new backcourt this year, growing and developing their games. He was one of the uh, top ten point guards in the country as a high schooler before joining the Zags. And then the setback last year early in the season with that broken jaw against Georgia, and he missed the rest of the season. And now trying to step into some awfully big shoes with uh, the graduation of Kevin Pangos from a year ago. Josh has done a good job and as he gets more confident and this team starts to gel a little bit, I think he's even going to be a better player as we get deeper into the season. But so far, he's done a, like Coach Fuse said, he's done a great job of doing what they've asked him to do and he continues to get better each game. Don's are running four guys on the perimeter right now. And why not? That's not the shot you want. And the foul will be called on the rebound. Brian Guinness bumped Dirksen out of the way. That would be the second on Brian Guinness. Well, they got bailed out on that. That was a terrible shot uh, from a team that's been getting good quality possessions each time. Talking about San Francisco. and That was just a, uh, a shot that was ill-advised. Foul. Got him bailed out. You know shot at it. Watson finds some space, and it's the tenth <laughs> triple of the night for USF. I think they're going to get somebody on number one. He's pretty good. <laughs> He's fearless, man, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> there is not a shot that he doesn't like or won't take. And right now, he is absolutely killing the gas Zags. Wiltshire able to clean it up, but it's Devin Watson with 23 points and four assists on the evening. Trying to create some pick and rolls high. Trying to create spacing is what San Francisco's trying to do. Make those big guys move their feet and get out of that lane just like that. Good oh, job. what a catch and a finish wow. by Dirksen on the assist from Watson. That was a well-designed basketball play. It, the passes were on the perimeter, but was were in the, such a manner that the big guys both had to move their feet, and they both ended up out of the lane. Look where Sabonis is at. That's exactly what you want. Look at that pass. Look at Sabonis. Look at Wilchers. Both those guys outside the lane, two or three feet. Wide open, so a 6'3 guy can make a layup. That's the third foul on Dirksen. USF is shooting 75% in the second half. They have hit five of their seven three-pointers. Just absolutely dominating this game offensively. Sabonis. Nice job getting down a little good shovel pass. This a bonus. He's got 19 points now to go along with seven boards. But again, it's on this defensive, uh, this end of the floor, where the Zags have to turn this one around. We need to get somebody on this guy right here, number one. Fisher, the left-hander, won't go. There you go, all night long. Sabonis, San Juan. They got no answer for that. That's why he started the basketball game with just throwing it to him and trying to make San Francisco make a decision. But he's in the middle of the lane. You got to get him out of the middle of that paint. That's the first, that's the shot before he made. Then they come back down. Look at him, he's posted up. That weak side guard can even lean in a little bit and get his hands in that passing lane like we talked about. Looking for his 22nd point of the night. That one won't go. Brian Guinness, offensive rebound and the foul on the Dons. And it's been a breakout season for Sabonis, the 6'11 sophomore from Lithuania. Leads the league in rebounding. He's the second best shooter. And right now, his field goal percentage is the best 
in West Coast Conference history over the course of his first year and a half. Averaging a double-double, Wiltshire out of the corner won't fall. Kept alive by Dryan Guinness, and then Perkins gets two, and it's back to a 10-point game. Good job, good activity on that offensive glass, keeping that ball alive, getting a shot, and, and going back to Sabonis. It's just he knows where he's supposed to be. He's, he doesn't venture out of his comfort zone too often. He'll shoot a little jumper from, you know, 12, 15, and, and he can make that. Every once in a while, a three, but he's going to that block, and that's where he's supposed to be, and he dominates it. Watson. Nelson got a piece of it on the block. Perkins now with the push. And the offensive foul. Chase Foster was ready and waiting for him. The sophomore out of Aurora, Colorado. Perkins has to make a better decision than that. You see he's got nowhere to go. Pull that ball out. You got Wiltshire trailing. Right there on your right hip. Just slow it up. Pull it out. Kick it over. Get an easy shot. Good job by Chase setting up, taking that charge. Foster had started the first nine games of the year for the Dons and now coming off the bench as uh, both of these teams have had to tinker with their lineups to find the right fit and the right chemistry. Nice backdoor cut. Watson yeah. got it and a foul. What a backdoor cut. That was outstanding. Went up, set his guy up, gave him a complete fake. Backdoor, nice pass as well. Look at that. And the foul right there. I'll tell you what, Mr. Watson, he is putting on a clinic offensively. At the Sobrato Center, and what a shooting spree for the Dons. 10 for 20 on the night, Brad. I'll tell you what, and, uh, Devin Watson has put on a clinic offensively, but they've been so well balanced offensively, inside and out. They've been able to attack, soften up that, that, that middle of Gonzaga's defense, and then kick the ball out and make some nice shots off of rotating uh, players coming up off the wings being lifted. They have played excellent on offense. How about that? Outscoring Gonzaga by 27 points from outside the arc tonight. They have led by as many as 16. Look at all the hands and arms. Look at the hands and arms. Five gold jerseys Perfect. around them. Perfect defense. That is excellent defense by San Francisco. Coach Walters got his team together at that break right there and took advantage. Get your hands in those passing lanes. That's a, that's a Roy Williams staple. He loves deflecting passes, and that's what you saw was arms and passes by Coach Walters' team. This may not be a Gonzaga team ranked in the top ten, but you know it still means a lot around the West Coast Conference if you can and he got get the W <laughs> over the dogs. 11 minutes Man. to go, and it's a 15-point game. I mean, if Ube got fouled there, I thought they didn't call it, but looked like he got a good bump. Foul's going to be called on the rebound here I mean, look Gonzaga. at this thing. Look at that. Look at that. There's gold bodies everywhere. Look at that. Hands up. Look at those hands up, hands up, hands up. Come over and help. Try to block that shot. Good defense. And Ofebu goes the other way, gets a huge body shot from Sabonis. Makes a tough shot. They're just out playing Gonzaga on both ends of the floor. Ofebu's got 14 points. Boyce with 15 to go along with 26 for Watson. Full court press. Yep. Zag's trying to pick up the pace a bit. Trying to force quick shots, and they did. That's what, the, that's what you want out of a, a press. Even though that guy's made everything he's looked at tonight, he's still it's a quick shot, so now it becomes a possession game for you if you use that, that full-court press. Wiltshire, baseline, chance for a three-point play. Dirksen, That'll Dirksen. be number four on Dirksen with ten and a half minutes to go. Dirksen's down, good defense. It's just good defense. I don't agree with that call at all. That's absolutely, I don't agree at all. He catches that basketball, uh, Wiltshire does, and he creates the contact by going into Dirksen. Dirksen holds his ground, and you're allowed to do that. He's trying to play him vertically. That's a terrible call. 18 points for Wiltshire. One of the best free throw shooters in the league misses that one. 13 point game. If that ball movement continues, they got to make that defense move from Gonzaga. Oh, Fabio way off. Good chance for Gonzaga to come back and attack. 
Come back, get that basketball inside. A foul off the ball, trying to defend on Wiltshire. This will be on Nate Renfro, his third. USF foul number 15, Nate Renfro, his third. Yeah, Wiltshire did a good job getting Renfro on his back. And once he had him there, he locked him. What Renfro will learn as a he's just a freshman, six seven freshman, is that you got to get away, bounce away, move those feet. You got to fly through, be aggressive, and really get through and fight through and get around on players like Wiltshire, who are so talented. Because once they get you locked back there, you're along for the ride. Tags now into the bonus here. Wiltshire with the second free throw. He's got 20 points now on the night to go along with 21 for Sabonis. Wiltshire's got such a nice touch, soft hands. Man, he's just an incredibly fundamentally sound player. See his hands, he's up in the passing lane. Trying to deflect passes. On the drive. Wow. Sabonis comes over to help, and Boyce is able to scoop it up and in. The second time in the last five possessions we've seen a scoop up and in. He's got 14 points here in the second half. 17 in the game. Here, Coach Walters yelling, move. Move. <laughs> move. Don't stand and watch that basketball. Nice drive. Ofebu fouled by Sabonis. Sabonis comes over and delivers that body. That'll be his third. Look at Boyce. Goes right between them. Good job by Sabonis not fouling there, but then the next play comes over and bodies him up. Gets his third foul. Well, we talked to Mark Few today. Said it's really going to come down to how, how are they going to guard us? And how are we going to guard them? We've talked a lot about the size discrepancy as the Dons have gone to a smaller lineup, their best scoring unit. And of course, Gonzaga with 6'11 Sabonis and 6'10 Wilcher figured to be able to dominate in the paint, but it's been relatively even inside with the dribble penetration for the Dons, and that's also opened things up for them from downtown. Yeah, and it exposes the, the weakness in the defense from Gonzaga because just like you said, Beth, with that dribble penetration, you collapse, and you know the ball's going to get kicked at some point in time, or you think it's going to, so it makes you timid to step over and help. If you're not sure, you won't step over and stop that basketball because you're anticipating the pass, and you know you're a little bit weak closing out, so that's exactly where San Francisco's got them, in between when they drive that ball, and that's how a smaller team scores on a big team inside. Well, now what kind of run can the Zags put together? Perkins showing some emotion after that layup. Please be careful. Don't yell at the official on that. I know you, everybody's frustrated on that end, but just keep your poise. A lot of time left in this basketball game. Perkins now with seven. Boy, that's a... Man. Wow, that was a tough <laughs> shot. So I, I, don't, I don't think it's a good shot. But what do you do? I mean... When you're hot, you're hot, Oh, right? yeah, absolutely. Man, he just, just drilled it in his face. Then he comes over and makes a steal. 20 points for Boyce. He also gets the strip. He has tied his career high. A little motion offense here. Don't stand and shoot. Keep moving that basketball. Pass it to a teammate. Cover the distance. Don't, yeah, don't be sloppy. That's exactly what happened. And it's Perkins the other way for the easy lay-in. Coach Walters is exonerating his guys. What are you doing? Don't be sloppy. We're not in a hurry. Numbers one and three in the gold jerseys, each with five triples tonight. Watson trying to work on McClellan, who bodies him up. Basketball's flying around for the Dons, and Ronnie Boyce says, hey, this is my shot. I'll be your Huckleberry. <laughs> Zach. Winner Derek Henry leading Alabama against Deshaun Watson and undefeated Clemson. Tune in Monday, January 11th at 8.30 on ESPN and also streaming live on the ESPN app. Who you got, the Tiger or the Tigers? I got to go with the Tigers because the ACC representing, but uh, we'll see what happens. That Bama's going to be tough, just like Ronnie Boyce. The third has been tough. My goodness. Well, the third is appropriate considering the triples he's dropping. He's tied his career high 20 points, 17 of them in the second half. Behind the strength of not only the dribble drive, but five triples. The Dons have dropped 11 of them tonight. They are outscoring Gonzaga by 30 points beyond the arc. Just wow. one triple for Woo. Gonzaga. Wow.
Wouldn't, uh, wouldn't think we'd be in this position with, with eight minutes to go in the second half. Uh, Zach is too good of a basketball team, got too much talent, too well coached. They're absolutely just getting it handed to them right now. And uh, a lot of time left, but, you know, San Fran has just been absolutely dominant since the open bell of this game. They have pretty much maintained a double-digit lead throughout this second half. Gonzaga has not been able to get it down into single digits. Failed by as many as 16. Perkins for three, and that one will go down. Well, they needed that. There's like a breath of fresh air for this basketball team. If he can get a couple of those shots going and open up that defense, then you start softening up really good, making them have to come out in space. They can really exploit him inside. Short on the runner by Boyce. Let's see if we get back to back possessions with the score. Well, all of a sudden, you got a ball game. Nice, the nice. A touch, and they do. Against the double team, comes up short. Zags, Mark Few furious. He wanted a foul. Watson misses the layup. I believe we got a whistle and a foul there on San Francisco. See the ball moving around. Perkins comes off that little corner there, jogs up, knocks in, knocks down a nice three. He was really working on the officials. Thought that was a foul on Sabonis underneath. They're not playing really as well as they're capable of playing, so it's very frustrating when you don't get those opportunities. They played correctly. They did what they needed to do and didn't get the ball. But it's good defense right now by the, the Dons. they got to pick it back up, though. they got to scramble. Nice offensive rebound there by Drang Guinness. will get him another possession. Good show right there by Reynolds. Sabonis gets the ball off the fake, lays it up and in, and it's back to a 10-point game. Well, he uses both hands so well around that goal, right and left. Just prototypical big guy in the paint when he catches that basketball. Thurston playing with four fouls. The kick out of Fabu had it blocked. Shot clock does not reset. It's down to five. Track that basketball. Gonzaga had him the trap. Boyce. Witcher with the rebound. A chance to get it down into single digits now for Gonzaga. No hurry for the Zags. A lot of time in this basketball game. Don't, don't be careless or sloppy with that basketball. You can get right back in this game with one more shot. And we'll inbound from the deep corner. Foster comes back into the lineup here for USF, along with McCarthy. He's giving him some good minutes off the bench. Number 10 in gold. Wiltshire on the drive. The double down and the dig by Watson. And a held ball will stay with Gonzaga. Good job by Watson coming back. We talked about this earlier. The guard dropping back and helping when Wiltshire puts the ball on the floor. Good defense. There's that guard play. Nice and quick. Just step back. Make him pick that basketball up. Don't allow him to be a ball handler and also a passer and a shooter. Make him get rid of that ball. Perkins for three won't go. Dirksen with a man size rebound. Dodge really need a basket bad. We're going to get to that five minute mark, and that's where the cream rises to the top. Watson on the drive. High off glass. He's got 29. It's awful easy. Too shy of a career high for him. Trying to make sure that Sabonis or Wiltshire can get a touch here every trip. This is Kyle Wiltshire. See, Watson's ready to help. Oh, he didn't go help. Off the ball, fake it. Oh, man. Watson didn't go help. Knew he was going to put it on the floor, and he just stood there and watched. I thought he was going to drop back like he did on the other side, make him pick the ball up. Well, he'll, he doesn't want to see that on film. Coach is going to get all over him on that. Dirksen goes baseline, tries to wrap it. Again, the Zags can get it down to single numbers. Perkins, second time tonight, he's been called for an offensive foul. See, right here, look at see Watson standing right here, number one. Okay, he's waiting, he's waiting. When he puts that ball on the floor, he's got to be there. 
You got to be there. Make him get rid of that ball. Boy, the coach is going to show that on film. That's going to be uh, that's going to be a chewing session on that. One. I'd like to both those games will also be streaming live on the ESPN app. And this is really good. I've, I've watched Oklahoma. I've seen their last five games, four of them in person, and they've got a deep basketball team, but they they play in spurts. And it's gotten them in a couple of games over the past five games that they could have lost if they didn't have Buddy Hill's ex extraordinary play. So they're going to have to buckle it up against Kansas because Kansas is legit. They got a nice win today against Iowa State. Yes, they Kansas did. just steamrolled Baylor. Scored Hammer. over a hunch. Hammer. Oh, man. Knocked out of bounds to Gonzaga. Hate to throw that ball away under that circumstance. Had a nice backdoor cut, but the, the, the lane, the defense was really good. Both those guys came together and locked down. And uh, a bad turnover in fourth and fourth. Third chance now to get it under 10. They're 0 for 2 on the first couple of trips here in the last two minutes. Perkins off the screen and roll. Brian Guinness will uh, get it to Wiltshire. There's the hook. Good out. job. Wiltshire tried to muscle it up and couldn't get it to go, and then Sabonis was fouled on the rebound. Good job by Sabonis staying active. Good job by the Dons defensively. Got back there, gave him some help. They're letting him dribble a long time, but Ofube finally comes over, disrupts the dribble, makes him take a very difficult shot. Look at Sabonis just throw his body into the air. For that, that rebound though. Good job. Another double double by the way for him. 23 points, 10 rebounds. He's a good free throw shooter. The left-hander, 83% on the season, and he missed it. Offensive rebound for Dran Guinness. Right there. Wilcher oh! back inside, and Sabonis thought it was tipped. And it will be USF basketball. Every possession going forward for USF is huge because Gonzaga has the ability to score point blank inside. But this team's right now, they're shooting a lot of jump shots, and that's the problem. It's one and done. Now they go back down. If Gonzaga scores, man, they're right there. They're putting a lot of pressure on a team that, you know, let's be honest, we thought Gonzaga was going to be leading at this point in the game. Cream, sift the cream rises to the top. This is their fourth chance now to get it down below 10. Where's the help? Sabonis goes away from the help to the left hand, and it's an eight-point game. Here they come. You know, this Gonzaga team, they're used to, they, you know, they've been in so many tournament games, so many big games, they're used to performing down the stretch. Can, can San Francisco maintain? Are they going to be able to make those shots? They're going to be able to keep their poise this last three minutes and win this basketball game. Watson. Passes up on the three. of Fabu to the line. Nice drive. Sabonis has just been dominant. Catches that basketball, gets the guy on his hip. Nice little turn. Lefty. Nothing you can do with that. Nothing. You totaled your brand new car. Nobody's hurt, but there will still be pain. It comes when your insurance company yeah, Perkins just a little bit out of control. Got the, the foul call there, the charge, and uh, go to the other end. And You know, it's just been one of those games where you're not getting all the calls. Everything's not going your way. You're not playing great. Coach Few's really been uh, furious. Nice job right there by Wiltshire. Nice post up. Need to get the help. San Francisco didn't come back and drop back in his lap. And Ronnie Boyce has been outstanding. Need more of that, though, these next couple of minutes if they're going to win this game. Both teams shooting better than 50%. In this second half, the Fabu came in as a 61% free throw shooter is four for four tonight. Big story here is the 11 three pointers for USF to just two for Gonzaga. Nice. Needed those buckets. Trying to see if Zaz can go down, but it'd be great if they could knock down a three. Get themselves right in the hunt. And Sabonis is fouled inside. Well, you don't want to foul. You don't want to give a good free throw shooter an opportunity to make points while the clock's not moving. Fourth foul smart. on Reynolds. Wilcher with 22. And Sabonis with 25 points. 11 rebounds for the Zags tonight.
have been quite the combo this year, averaging 37 points per game. Their season high 60 points together against Tennessee in their win over the balls. Got to eat some clock up. Got to eat some clock up. Here's Rex Walters yelling motion. A little ball movement. See if we create some gaps. But that one for Boyce couldn't finish. Zags could have some numbers here on the push. McClellan wide open for three. Missed it, but Wilcher is there. Wow, great hustle by Wilcher. And now they've got it down to a two-possession game, and an offensive wow. foul will get the ball back to Gonzaga. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I got to see that again. That, well, it looked like he slipped and lost his balance, but I don't know if it was a, was it a foul. Let's see here. Well, they say he's got that left arm okay. out with the okay. push. It's a 13 to 4 run right now for Gonzaga. Fisher had a better angle than we did. Three is good foul. for Perkins. A lot of confidence right there. All of a sudden, it's a three-point game with the cream rise to the top. San Fran hadn't had a good shot in the last few possessions. They had the free throws, but outside of that, it's been a little chaotic. Closest they've been since before halftime. They've been down by as many as 16. Under two minutes to go. Watson steps back. Air ball. Well, no, just don't get a quality shot. Well, they had Wilcher with they did, position yeah. inside. Dirksen is guarding him with four fouls. Throw it There you go. Absolutely. Sabonis baseline. And a foul. And a, foul. And a foul. free throw wow. to tie it up. Wow, what a powerful move by Sabonis. Outstanding move by the big fella. Nice spin. Gets Dante Reynolds on his hip, throws up that left hand, throws it down, and gets smacked in the mud. Great job, Tabonis. Great job. That is the fifth personal foul on Reynolds. And Sabonis is a free throw away from a 30-point night and from completely erasing a 16-point second-half deficit with 1.28 to go. Unbelievable. Yeah, San Francisco just has not been able to get a decent shot. And uh, even though they've been able to make a lot of the out shots throughout the night, the shots they've taken over the last two and a half minutes have just been bad shots. They got away with a few earlier because there was so much rhythm in the game. But as you get down to the nitty-gritty and every possession counts, you've got to have quality possessions, not quantity, quality. So you want to execute your offense. Last 10 points have been scored by the Zags, and we are even at 79. Watson's got to be careful with that arm. He has a tendency to sling that arm out there to create a little space, just as a habit. Good foul called on him. Last USF bucket was at the five and a half minute mark. In motion offense. Don't have to force the shot. will step back. That won't go. And a chance for Gonzaga to take the lead. Boyce made as much. Like I said, they've made a lot of those shots in their offense throughout the game. But right now, I think you're trying to look for the best shot you possibly get. I'm throwing this one inside of Sabonis. That's a no-brainer. McClellan. We'll try for three. Wilcher offensive rebound. Right. The putback is good. Good job by Wilcher. Such great hands that young man has. Wow. 12 unanswered to take the lead. 30 seconds to go. Watson circus shot. No. Held ball will stay with the Dons and the shot clock will be turned off. See the jumper here. Watch, watch, watch. Look at these hands. Just great hands. Then you go to the other end. Watson, that shot was just a little bit of, of a shot in desperation. They don't have to do that. That motion offense will yield an opportunity for a clean jump shot. What a comeback for Gonzaga. Trailing by 16 points midway through this second half. They go on a 12-0 run to grab the lead. And now if you're USF, 
you struggled to score here in the last five minutes, Brad. Do you like the option of trying to win it in regulation? You've hit 11 threes in the... In fact, over the last eight minutes, they have outscored the Dons 21-5. to five. Twenty-six seconds to go. Shot clock is off. With the ball down two. No panic. Watson, 4-3 wow. wow. in the lead. It's not no. the shot you want. Wasn't the shot you wanted. That's... It's difference not, between a three and a good three, isn't it? There's a difference between a three and a good three, and you have so much time on the clock. Why take that shot right now? I mean, I know that was a, the play looks like it was drawn up, but that just... Their, their motion offense creates so many opportunities. Really would like to see them shoot that ball in a, out of their offense. USF will call its final timeout to try and ice the shooter if uh, they can get Dran Guinness to miss one here. They would still have a chance to tie it. 19.9 seconds to go. Sabonis, 30 points, 11 rebounds. Wiltshire with 26 points and nine boards. And Watson, 29. Couple shy of his career high. Both these young men have played outstanding games tonight, but I tell you, these are the games that give coaches gray hair. Yeah. Uh, Coach Wal Walter's team was so well prepared. They played you know, 35 minutes of just really, really good basketball. And, all of a sudden, that big, powerful team of Gonzaga just starts dominating and making baskets and stopping them on defense. Now, all of a sudden, the game is tied, but they're up two. Next possession. Dran Guinness is a 52% free throw shooter. Three-point lead. a three-point lead. Dirksen, he'll try for three. To oh, tie. man. Six seconds for the Zags to try and win it. Perkins for the win. And we are headed to overtime at the year for the Zags. Has played. They played themselves right back in this game just by playing their style of basketball. And San Fran's played so hard tonight. These guys have laid it all on the line. Let's we'll see what this next five minutes is. That's going to go to the Dons. How big is this for USF? Well, you're talking about a Gonzaga program that has won 14 of the last 15 regular season conference crowns. And 13 of the last 17 postseason titles. This would be a huge boost for USF. And for Gonzaga, on a week where they found out they would lose Shimmick Karnowski for the rest of the season. A roller coaster ride of a year, and it's been a roller coaster night for them. To yeah. be able to come back and win it would be spectacular for their confidence. It's absolutely gone cold from shooting that three-point ball, though. They just cannot make a shot from the out. So they got to get back to driving that basketball. It's just they're taking some bad shots and giving up a lot of defensive rebounds and fouls. So bonus to the free throw line. They are 11 of 18 as a team tonight. What is that nice stroke? Says big guys can't shoot free throws. Look at him shoot that thing, man. That's beautiful. Where's your free throw percentage? About 75%. Not bad. Not, not bad. bad at all. Yeah. 32 points. He's now four shy of his career high. He's absolutely played an outstanding game tonight. He and Wilcher both have played well. Good Wilcher. defense. Good defense by Sabonis. And Dirksen. They've already lost Reynolds to five fouls. Dirksen continues to play with four, and the held ball will go to Gonzaga.
think we know where this basketball is going. Give it a little clock up, throw it a little swing pass, try to get it down to Sabonis on the block. Let him do his damage. Oh, he throws it high, came mid post. Wasn't expecting it. He's coming up to set a screen. Inadvertent pass. On the drive, Boyce got in too deep and left his feet. Cardinal center in basketball. Leaving your feet with the basketball. Unless you're going to shoot it or sling it up in the stands, you don't leave your feet with the basketball. Nothing good happens. Working against the zone. Nice flash by Wilcher. Nice pass. Good, good high low game for the Zags. They'll get him back to the free throw line. Yeah. That high low's been great. Big 6'10 guy throwing it down to the seven footer. And man, Sabonis has been having an outstanding game. Now he's been dominant. That is the fourth foul on Renfro. Which was such a good passer of the basketball. So strong underneath is Domas. 12 for 16 from the floor, 8 for 10 from the free throw line. Big fellas also got four assists tonight. Got it all. Played really well. Second one puts the Zags up four. A lot of time. A lot of time. Gotta be patient. Dirksen for three. And oh, it's it. the Good home bounce. Good job. Nice shot. Dirksen's getting some shots up. Need more of that from him. Ten yeah. points in limited action due to the foul problems very early in the game tonight. Double screen from McClellan on the baseline. Look to throw that thing back inside. This a bonus. He's got a good post up. Watcher wow. the deep three, and he's got it. His first of the night. Sabonis way up for the rebound. He's got a dozen. Make it a baker's dozen. Phoenix be called Venetians. Why, indeed. Well, the developing story here at USF is the health of Devin Watson, who uh, just limped off the floor and is now with the athletic trainers. Yeah, I heard him say to the trainer that my Achilles cramped. So uh, just, you know, a lot of energy, a lot of effort. These young men are perspiring at a tremendous pace, was playing so hard, cramping up a little bit, I do believe. That's big news. He's got 29 points with five threes tonight and seven assists. And it does not appear like he will be able to get back out on the floor right now with the rest of his teammates coming out of the timeout. That is a big blow, so let's see if they can recover. Next man up. It's going to be Chase Fisher out there. And now Georgievich, the big guy up at the top of the zone. Three is good from Dragon Guinness. Just starting to pull away here, separate themselves. A lot of time still left though this ball game. San Frank can still get some good shots with a couple of those threes that they had going for him early on that second half. Well, it was the threes of USF and regulation. Now the threes for the Zags here in the OT as Dirksen is fouled on the baseline drive. Personal foul. Pass down to the corner. Swinging the basketball. Nice movement. Bottom. And now at the other end, that is the fourth personal foul on Sabonis. A shade under two minutes to go here in OT. Watson stays on the end of, end of the bench there, right above Sabonis's head. And now on his feet. And getting set to check in at the scorer's table as Dirksen knocks it down. Full court pressure out of that make. Rebound! 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 
facing so important here as you're trying to eat clock up and get a good shot. Got to pull that defense out. Make them come out and guard you. Richard will step outside. Sabonis has yeah. his man. And he draws a foul on Renfro, and he will be the second Don to depart. Joining Reynolds with five personal fouls. Sabonis does such a good job when he gets someone on his hip. Wiltshire does too. You get behind those guys, it's so difficult to get around. See, post up nice and big in that lane. Big and strong. Nowhere for Renfro to go. Can't get around. Too late. And now Sabonis to the line. He's 10 of 12. This is on the first. Another big night for Sabonis and Wiltshire. Gets that one to go. I think Gonzaga's figuring out, though, what they have to have every night if they're going to be you know, a good, dominant basketball team. And that's big nights from Wiltshire and Sabonis. They're both going to have to really pour it in night after night. What do they combine for tonight? Uh, 63 points. Yeah. 64 on the evening. Nice driving dish here for Ronnie Boyce, and it's Matt McCarthy to the line. He is just 4 of 13 on the season. Looks like offensive defensive substitutions here with Wiltshire as the Dons miss both free throws. Who did those? It's like that offensive set up near half court. That makes the defense stretch. So now it makes it easier. They look for pads to Sabonis to get an easy shot. Very easy. McClellan on the drive for the lay-in. One minute to go in overtime after the Zags erased. A 16-point second-half deficit. Boy, I'm just and the drive say, for Watson to score. Don't want to foul. Don't want to foul. Don't want to let him turn the corner. You don't want to foul. Nice drive. No one steps in front. Eric McClellan goes right to the basket. Does what he's supposed to do. And they're in. Somebody, you, you got him turning the corner. Okay, Wilcher's got to get down there. He's got to get down there and put his foot on that baseline. He's got to help him. Another missed free throw for USF. Still a two-possession game. Got a foul. And they're going to foul McClellan. It was the worst of the free throw shooters on the floor. 64%. He's one for three tonight. And that's exactly what Mark Few is talking to Wiltshire about. How about a little help for yeah. the baseline down the other end? <laughs> Got to move your feet. Both Wilter and Sabonis with double doubles on the night. Perkins helped out with 15. And guys like McClellan and Brian Guinness just kind of doing their thing. A yep. so, little something here, a little right. something there. That's right. And that, that's what they're trying to figure out about this team is how good are they going to be, where do they want to go. And uh, you see, you need Sabonis and Wilter to dominate offensively and defensively and the other guys to play their roles. And they got a good chance. Watson, if it goes, a chance for a three-point play. And will not drop, but that will be all for Sabonis, who has fouled out with 35 points and 14 rebounds. Wow, what a night. Yeoman's work. Bonus gets caught on a little guy. Watson does the right thing. Go right into him. Great that foul. One shy of a career high for Sabonis. He went to work tonight. He brought his lunch pail and absolutely went to work. Hit this one. You get it back to a two-possession game. 38 seconds to go. USF still has a timeout and the possession arrow. As Watson fights through the cramping. Mark Will Smith into the lineup for the first time tonight. Mark Will Smith, another freshman. Coach Walters has got a ton of freshmen and sophomores on this basketball team. Young team. 
And a quick whistle there on the foul called. We'll get McClellan back to the line. Mark Few talked about uh, the losses this season, the three of them, to Texas A&M and the, to the two Pac-12 schools. He said, you know what, we made some costly errors. Yeah. And part of that was inexperience, and, and part of that was trying to figure out what to do when the game is on the line. Those errors, those experiences may have helped them here tonight, overcoming a 16-point deficit on the road. They never gave up. There's no doubt about that. Obviously, they wouldn't be in this position, but they were getting hammered earlier, and uh, but they just figured it out. Wiltshire, solid defense that time on the drive by Watson. Stayed in his lane, stayed vertical, and another trip to the line for the Zags. And on one of those nights that they'll remember the rest of the season. Coach Walter's team has a lot, though, to be proud of. They played really hard. They're going to get better. So close down the stretch, and then Dirksen with the late three to force the overtime, but it's been all zags here in the extra session. Scoring them 19 to 9 here in OT. Turks in the kick out. Foster for three, and he's got it. And the final timeout for USF. With 19 seconds to go. And you get that last five minutes, especially against a really good basketball team and a, you know, a program with a tradition. You've got to make plays. You've got to execute. You've got to do the things you do every day in practice. That's why you spend so much time running through your offensive drills, your defensive drills, to prepare for those last five minutes. You've got five of your next seven games on the road, including uh, another crack at Gonzaga on January 30th up in Spokane. It's the opposite for Gonzaga. Five of their next seven will be at home. And Rex Walters is uh, wondering where the foul was on that one. And someone just picked up their fifth personal foul. That'll be the third Don to depart. There's a look at Gonzaga's upcoming schedule. Including uh, BYU at home on ESPN2 and then a roadie at St. Mary's January 21st on ESPNU. Both the Zags and the Gales are atop the conference right now with 4 0 marks if this score holds. St. Mary's impressive in their win earlier tonight over USD. Major gut check on the road for the Zags and they come through. Yeah, they did. They came through in a big way. They, they could have easily lost this basketball game. They played really poorly early, but man, they really got it together. And I think they figured out how they got to play. And that'll do it. San Francisco had a chance.